On the last episode, we talked about safety leadership is not just for those with a title. So in this episode, we'll talk about six ways to become a respected safety leader. People work, the human touch in workplace safety. Available everywhere on Amazon. To learn more, go to kevburns.com slash peoplework. You know, as a safety leader, more doors open, more options are available, and the longer you're likely to live. And that's how we're going to start. Now, my blog post, Safety Cop or Safety Leader, got a lot of traffic and created a lot of discussion. To read it for yourself, go to kevburns.com slash blog, and in the search bar on the right-hand side, enter Safety Cop or Safety Leader. See, in Safety Cop or Safety Leader, some safety people actually found themselves inadvertently standing on the wrong side of the conversation. But as Dr. Phil says, you can't fix what you don't acknowledge. So to become a safety leader, you have to first understand what safety leadership is not. It is not safety management. Now, since there's no requirement to be in management to be a leader, then it only makes sense that you don't have to be in safety management to be a safety leader. Safety leadership is not just for those with a title. Safety leaders can be found on the front lines too. They're willing to coach and inspire better safety performance through mostly their example. See, being a leader starts with being willing to go first. The first person to do something is the leader. Everyone else follows, but to go from safety person to safety leader requires a mindset shift. So with that in mind, let's explore six mindset shifts that can cause you to become a better and respected safety leader. Mindset shift number one, coaching over coercion. Now, safety leaders don't coerce or force people to obey commands. If you have to coerce your people to get anything done, then it's pretty safe to say you're not really leading anyway. What real safety leaders want is to help employees to make better decisions for themselves. Coercion takes away free choice. People hate to be told what to do, but they love to feel like they have some degree of choice. So give your people the opportunity to step up and demonstrate their own personal leadership skills and people be more inclined to make the right choice. Mindset shift number one is coaching over coercion. Mindset shift number two, communication over telling. Now, people don't particularly choose well without good information, but information is just words. Telling people about safety is not the same as truly communicating safety. Telling's just using words. It only becomes communication when the other person acknowledges, understands, and internalizes what they were told. Otherwise, it's just words. Leaders ensure that the information was understood and internalized. When what was said is understood and internalized, then they have successfully communicated. True communication is the keystone of safety leadership. Mindset shift number two, communication over telling. Mindset shift number three, is people work over paperwork. Now, we're not suggesting that safety paperwork isn't important. It is, and it's still gotta be done. But we have to focus on the fact that it's people who get injured. It's people who make decisions on safety. It's people who get your safety results. We hurt when people get hurt, not when they fill out a form wrong. People are always going to be more important. People who only want the best for others are people who care about others. And it's difficult to be fully vested in safety without a genuine caring for others. Let's remember that. Safety leadership is people work over paperwork. Now, that's mind shift, mindset shift number three. And speaking of people work, get your copy today of People Work, The Human Touch in Workplace Safety. It's available everywhere around the world on Amazon. All right, let's get back to the list. Mindset shift number four is community over compliance. How do you actually show your appreciation for the contribution and value of meeting the minimum requirement of the safety code? I mean, meeting the bare minimum of safety is not safety leadership. It's short-term compliance. Safety leadership is tied directly to the way you appreciate your people, recognize their contribution, and value who they are and what they do. Create a teamwork focus that honors and protects the whole community. Create a community that cares for and looks out for the rest of the community. Mindset shift number four, community over compliance. 
Mindset shift number five is respect over regulation. Now, barking orders requires little skill or talent. Building respect does, though. It's difficult to trust someone you don't respect. And it's even more difficult to be told about the right way to do things from somebody who obviously doesn't respect the people they're talking to. As much as regulations and rules are important, what people want more from their supervisors is to be respected. Look, when people know that you trust and respect them, they'll trust and respect you in return. People are more willing to engage with a safety leader who respects the people they work with. Mindset shift number five is respect over regulation. And mindset shift number six, equality over ego. Now, safety is the great equalizer. Everyone is equal. In safety, positions are removed. And if everyone has a shared responsibility for safety, then no one person or position is more important than another. Look, in the eyes of safety, no one life is more important than another. Injury doesn't choose its victims based on position. That's the reason why safety is not just the domain of those with safety letters behind their name. Everyone is equal in safety. Safety leaders ensure that everyone understands that we are all equal and equally responsible for our own and others' safety. Mindset shift number six, equality over ego. Safety leadership requires active participation. There are no spectators in the successful safety culture. Everyone is a full and willing participant. You see it show up in their choices in speaking up and taking active roles in safety meetings and in taking safety home. Safety leaders don't do it for the applause. They do it in order to be able to give others applause. There will always be employment for good leaders. Safety leaders are going to be in demand. They'll always have options, and that means security for their families and themselves. It makes economic sense for your future to get on board with safety and step up and be a safety leader. The better you become as a safety leader, the better the quality of life, more doors open, more options are available, and the longer you're likely to live.